Well, today, the Wisconsin Elections Commission's initial count showed there are not enough valid signatures to recall Assembly Speaker Robin Voss. Supporters of former President Donald Trump turned in over 10,000 signatures to the WEC on Monday. That's what you're looking at here. But today, the validity of many signatures is in question, and there aren't enough signatures from Voss's old district or the new district defined by new legislative maps. The WEC will be conducting a second review of these signatures. And we're joined now by J.R. Ross, the editor, of course, of WISPolitics.com. So they're going to go back and look at all these signatures, J.R., but what's the level of confusion right now over which district or which maps they should be counting these signatures in? So here's the dilemma. The state Supreme Court ruled back in December that you can't use the maps that were in place in 2022. They're unconstitutional. The bill that was signed by Governor Evers to put new maps in place doesn't take effect until the fall elections, the August primary and November general election. So what do you do in between? That's the question. Where should you gather signatures from and how would you hold an election under which lines? So the commission's asking the Department of Justice to then go to the Supreme Court and say, hey, can you provide some clarity? But the bottom line is whether they use Voss's old district or the new one, they appear short as we speak right now. Now there's some opportunities to try and fix these signatures possibly above the number, but they look short right now. So it almost doesn't matter what the court says, barring some fixes on the people who circulate those petitions. If this somehow goes through and gets to a recall election, what, what legitimate impact could it actually have? I mean, for all intents and purposes, state government is pretty much done operating for the year, and somebody could just challenge Robin Voss in a primary in August if he, in fact, chooses to run again. So really, what kind of impact could a recall even have on state government? On the government, not much, but on some Republicans, quite a bit. I mean, Robin Voss is not just a leader of that caucus in the building. He is a leader of the election effort. Mm -hmm. He is out there recruiting candidates, assuring incumbents that they're going to have support this fall with these new maps, trying to find a way to keep the majority. Like he is the tip of that spear. If he's not there, who would step in raise money, recruit candidates, run the show. And oh, by the way, this might drain resources that would otherwise go to the overall team effort. When you are targeted for recall in Wisconsin, you have a window where you can raise unlimited amounts of money. One of those, you know, contributions like a thousand bucks for an individual donor it doesn't apply during this. So on the one hand, boss could be raising big chunks of change. We just don't know. I've seen a report from him yet. But on the other, again, it, it takes time and, and resources away from the team effort at a time when we expect Republicans to have a smaller majority, if not lose the majority, this fall. The new map doesn't guarantee anybody anything. But more than likely, barring something crazy happens this fall, there will be fewer assembly Republicans. This is not what you want to have. You're trying to fight that tide right now for that caucus. All right, JR, given all those things that you just mentioned, you're walking those halls quite a bit. You're in there all the time, talking to people all the time. What, what has been the reaction to this effort? How is it being received inside the state capitol? Look, when they first filed a couple months ago, people were dismissive. Like, these guys are not going to be able to get together the signatures. It's cold in January. Um, in fact, when they filed originally, it was like we're a cold snap when the worst we had this winter. <laughs> um, these guys will be organized enough. They're not going to know which lines to use. So to their credit, they got a lot of signatures. The problem is they may not have gotten them from the right places. So people are dismissive of that to start. But two, the question I keep getting from people is, you know, why does Robin Voss want to deal with this? If this recall effort fails, they're not going to go away. They're going to go maybe challenge him in the primary in August. Don't forget, Robin Voss survived the primary challenge in August of 2022 by 260 votes. Donald Trump is still not a big fan of Robin Voss. Donald Trump is going to be the nominee for Republicans mm -hmm. this fall for president, barring something unlikely happening between now and the summer. How is Robin Voss going to navigate if it comes to that? That dynamic of having the GOP nominee for president basically not a friend of yours and possibly advocating for your opponent, which is what happened two years ago, where Trump kind of actively said, hey, go vote for Adam Steen. So given all that, what you've said, and you and I have talked about Robin Voss on this program a number of times for a number of different reasons. He is very powerful in this state. But you, we've talked a little bit about his legacy, what he wants to leave behind. Are we even sure that he wants to run again? He said he does. You know, uh, people I've talked to are kind of curious what that dynamic is going to look like. I mean, if you pull back in these new maps, you've got this interesting spot where Tyler August from Lake Geneva is the assembly majority leader. He's basically the speaker in waiting. Tyler joined into a district with a number, another Republican lawmaker. 
Um, it kind of goes over to the Lake Michigan, uh, from Pleasant Prairie, that area in southeastern Wisconsin. He's right next to the district that Robin Voss is in. A little bit farther away to his west is the district with another incumbent Republican. So they don't want Tyler to go away because he is the person who's been trained basically to take over. Their question is like, okay, is Robin going to stick around and possibly have Tyler shut out? Or will Tyler run against a fellow Republican in the assembly? There's that kind of mess to figure out. And two, again, Robin Voss has done a ton of stuff. Um, why would you want to deal with this constant headache is not going to go away. Right. At the same time, Robin Voss, if you know him, he's not going to allow somebody who's filed a recall petition to feel like they chase him out of office. And there's also the possibility of doing more. I mean, there's going to be a, another election for governor in 2026. If Republicans got a Republican governor, they can maybe do some things that they, they haven't been able to do under Governor Evers. So there's going to be that enticement. But yeah, there are people wondering like, why? He's the longest serving speaker in Wisconsin history. Mm -hmm. There's a reason how many people live in that, stay in that job for a long time. A lot of palace intrigue around him. Some intrigue as uh, the Senate wraps up business here this week. And again today, they rejected eight more Governor Evers appointees today. Just real quickly, put that into context for us. Well, I'm up to 22 executive branch appointees since Evers took office. Now that includes some people that were, you know, one guy appointed by the part of Ag Secretary. but. That's 22 in five years and change. Um, in the previous four decades, there have been four. Uh, today, there were rejections of four members of the Judicial Commission, which basically handles complaints against judges. As far as I can tell, there had never been one rejected ever in its 46-year history. Basically, the, the capital is somewhat broken. Uh, there used to be kind of a, a thing where it's like the Cold War. You know, mutually assured destruction kind of held people back from doing the extreme. Republicans have been in control of the Capitol for basically a dozen years in the legislature. They haven't had to worry about what it looked like for a Democratic-controlled Senate to deal with GOP control appointees. The shoe down might be another foot someday. We, these new maps open the door to Democrats taking control. There could be a governor who's a Republican in the East Wing someday, a Democratic-controlled Senate, and there'll be nothing to hold those guys back from saying, okay, look, this is how you treat Evers. We're now going to do X to your appointments because we want to even things, even the score. Political polarization alive and well in Wisconsin, as always. All right, JR, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it on a busy day. Anytime. Take care.